The question of when seems to have preoccupied the biblical mind. When will something happen? The Old Testament prophets were prophets in part because they predicted the future. Now, prophecy is not only about predicting the future, it's also about speaking the truth in the present, but part of it involved predicting the future. In terms of the question of when, the Old Testament prophets were concerned with two things. When will God's judgment come upon Israel in the form of an invasion? And when will Israel fall to a foreign power? Will it happen during the reign of the current king, or the next? or several generations from now? Will it happen if we repent? Will it happen if the powerful repent, or if the people repent? Or will it happen regardless? And when? Soon? Immediately? Down the road? In the New Testament, people also wondered about when, and asked the question in two ways. The first and most pressing question was, when will the Roman Empire be driven from Israel? When will we be liberated? When will a great Jewish leader rise up to lead a rebellion? Or when will God come down from heaven and defeat the Romans? The second question, which may have some overlap with the first, is when will God's final judgment be unleashed upon the earth? When will the end of time happen? Apocalyptic literature was popular at the time, literature that attempted to reveal the forces at work beneath the injustices of our world using images of and predictions about the future. These usually involve stories of great upheaval, both earthly and cosmic. We just finished the Gospel of Mark, which was partially apocalyptic with its references to the Son of Man coming from heaven to judge the nations. And of course, the most famous apocalyptic book in the Bible is the Apocalypse of John, also known as the Book of Revelation. This literature was meant to reveal the true powers behind current injustice, even though it seems to have always caused people, even up to this day, to ask the question, yes, but when will these things happen? Our passage this morning revolves around this question as well. The disciples have been experiencing the risen Christ for 40 days after his death. They've experienced him alive. We don't know exactly what they talked to Christ about during those 40 days. We know he taught them about the kingdom of God. We know he told them to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. We know that they did not understand what Jesus meant by the Holy Spirit. We know that because he mentions the Spirit, and their response to that is, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? There's that word again, when. As if to say, Jesus, this Holy Spirit sounds really great, but when will we get what we've been waiting for? When will the suffering stop? When will things get better? When will we get justice? Jesus responds to them as he does when they ask similar questions back in the Gospels. He says, stop asking when. If you are preoccupied with when the kingdom of God will come, then you're not focused on the more important question of how it will come. How will the values of the kingdom of God be implemented? How will we live in the kingdom starting today? How will we throw off the yoke of oppression, even if the oppressor stays among us, even if we may be part of the oppression? How will we receive this Holy Spirit? Jesus is teaching the disciples to stop worrying about when something will be accomplished for them and to stay focused on how they can contribute to a world where God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. How can they contribute to the kingdom of God on earth? But this question of how is not just a message about everybody working really hard to be good so that the world can become better. In the view of Jesus and the early church, it wasn't just about hard work. It was fundamentally about spiritual transformation, a transformation from within each person. There will be no kingdom of God on earth without spiritual renewal. And that spiritual renewal, according to Jesus, requires the Holy Spirit. So when the disciples ask, when will things get better? Jesus says, you need the Holy Spirit 
to help you change the way you are living. Now, there are volumes written on who or what the Holy Spirit is, but one of the strongest biblical testimonies to the Holy Spirit is that it is the Spirit of Christ at work in the world today. So, after Jesus died and then appeared risen to his disciples and then was seen by them rising up into heaven, then his spiritual presence returned. That presence transformed the disciples from scared, lost, aimless individuals to a courageous, purpose-driven people. The Holy Spirit is Jesus' answer, not to the question, when will the kingdom of God come, but how? Today, as in biblical times, we also find ourselves asking the question, when? The most pressing question for many people right now is, when will things go back to normal? When will the threat of COVID-19 be manageable? When will we go back to school and work and church? But this current question of when is not new. The coronavirus just gives us another topic. For instance, many people who experience institutional discrimination in our world today are still asking when. When will we be treated fairly? When will the suffering and oppression of our people stop? It's not really so different than the question those early disciples were asking about when will the Roman occupation come to an end? Others have asked the question related to climate change and environmental destruction. When will our leaders take the threat seriously? When will we start making necessary changes to protect God's creation for future generations? When will we experience the point of no return? When will it get so bad that we decide it's time to make the changes? Our preoccupation with when has not changed that much since biblical times. So perhaps the question Jesus offers to those disciples is equally important to us today. Stop asking when and start asking how. How can we make the changes we need to make? How can we live differently? And most importantly, how can we find the power we need to do that which, up to this point, we have not been able to do? And just as Jesus answers his disciples, so he answers us. You need a spiritual transformation. You need the Spirit of Christ to awaken your hearts, to change your minds, to transform your lives. He says, don't just try harder. Don't just white knuckle another lifestyle change. But we must ask God to pour out the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, upon us and into our hearts. We must ask God to change us from within. And not just as individuals either. We need to ask for that change as a church and as a people. The communal nature of transformation is critical, at least it was for those early disciples. It says that after Jesus ascended to heaven, the disciples returned to Jerusalem, to the upper room where they were staying and where they were praying together. They stayed together and they prayed together. They didn't go off separately and pray in their own little private prayer closets. They didn't just pray as individuals. They sought God's guidance and power together. You know that saying, the family that prays together stays together. Well, that's not really true. Sometimes families that pray together do not stay together. But maybe the church that stays together and prays together is more likely to be transformed by the Spirit of Christ together. The message is this. We need to stop asking when something will happen, and start asking how. We need to be transformed from the inside out. We need to stop looking to the future for our salvation, but stay focused on the present. We don't have power simply by our own willfulness and our own good intentions to make the changes that are needed. This isn't about pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. We need the power of something greater than ourselves. 
It's not that we have nothing to do as individuals. We have our own work to do. But without the inner transformation, there can be no outer transformation. We need to ask God to change our hearts on the inside so that our lives can change on the outside. To change us from within. Ask her to pour out her Holy Spirit into our hearts. Ask her to change us from the inside out. And not just to change us as individuals either, though that's important, but to change us as a people. To transform our families, our neighborhoods, our churches, our society, and our world. Don't ask when. Ask how. And then seek the power of God that will empower us to do that which to this point we have not been able to do, to bring to this broken, beautiful world a glimpse of the kingdom of God. Amen.